Hi there everyone, thanks very much for joining me. I'm Dean, this is Woodwork Journey, and today we're going to be making a container, words, for these Smurdex mesh sheets. Say that quickly. Let's get into it. Right, so a while ago I made this for my sanding discs, and it's been fine. I've had no problems with this, however, um, I've just filled that up again with the stuff that eBrasives sent me. I've, I've got those details in the description down below. Um, but uh, I had, they also sent me these um, mesh sheets, which are sort of nice little dinky mesh sheets. And um, they're super useful to have, but they need to be accessible. So I'm not going to put them into a drawer and I'm going to need to make something like that. But because they are so much smaller than a sanding disc, like these are 150 sanding discs, and so these are smaller, um, it doesn't need to take up this much space. So I'm going to make a little thing with that. And what I thought about was I just had this bit of an old pallet and I thought, you know what, I just hand sawed it into two. And then I thought, well, what if I cut this down into strips and then can I make something with these two bits of wood? And these are, I'm not promising I'm going to stick to this, but 15 inches by one and a half by two and a half. So, yeah, we'll see how we get on with that. And uh, let's get into it. Let's cut these down on the bandsaw first. Okay, so I got frustrated with how bad these dovetails were the other day. You can see some stuff going on here, which is pretty, pretty horrific. I mean, some of them aren't too bad, but it's been a minute. So um, I was going to redo them. But you know what I'm just going to do is done is better than perfect. And I am going to carry on using these. And we're going to see if we can make them look nicer and, uh, and cover up all the mistakes. And one of the ways I'm going to do that is going to be using one of the Smurdex mesh um, sheets on the P80. I'm going to pop that on the back of something and then I'm going to create my own sawdust. So I've got a bit of the same bit of wood. Get rid of any other stuff. And because it's mesh, it's all coming up 
underneath the uh, the sheet there so I can collect all of this. Also, you might see here, there's quite the big step down and that's because I uh, did these the wrong way around. So the top should be the bottom and the bottom should be the top. Try to be relatively purposeful with uh, where this glue is going. One of these dovetails is crazy loose. So yeah, these aren't my best, but uh, done is better than perfect. And it's just for the shop at the end of the day, so who cares? Yeah, I kind of forced one in that didn't need to, or wasn't in the right place there, but never mind. Being a woodworker isn't about not making mistakes, it's known about how to cover them up, I believe. Okay, so that's got a lot of glue in the uh, in the areas that need it now where i've got this little bit of sawdust i'm going to throw in some glue and make my own filler okay now we go around the areas that need filling and fill them sorting out a gap or two on the inside as well now, if this wasn't quite the mess that it is, I would normally look at sanding everything down while the joints are wet. That way, the sand dust that you create, sand dust, sawdust, that you create will um, go in the holes. But seeing as I made such a massive cock up of this one, I am going to go and stick this outside and let it cool down, seeing as it's the first day of proper summer. Let it cool down, let it dry. Alrighty, we'll go pretty angry to start with. I'm going to use a P100 Smerdex disc. Save that for the lathe work. These stick so well as well. It's never going to look perfect, but we're starting to get there. Now we've got to worry about the shelves inside and one of the things that I've just realised is I was going to put dados in there not to put the shelves in, to put the cross pieces in which these are too small Bugger! Well I cocked up there didn't I? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop a sheet around a piece of wood like so and then that is now my uh, inside sander. Of course if you didn't make a mess of the glue up or the dovetails you wouldn't have to do all this. Got a thin bit of old super thin board that was used for something else that the plywood's cracking off of. But I imagine this will do for the bottom. Once again, I'm not going crazy on the bottom. It just is what it is, you know? Actually, if I go a little bit over, then I can always flush gut it if I need to. There's a bit of varnish or something on this bit of plywood, so I'm just getting the worst off the edges just to make sure that it sticks as I want to. Go in there like that though, jobs are good. Again, I could have cut a dado for this, I could have done all sorts of things, but it's just to hold sandpaper in the shop, you know. Right, see if I guessed right or if they're all poking through. No, none of them are poking through. Get that up, yeah.
Well, at least every single one of them is exactly the same amount too short. So, you know, there's that. I need to make a new fence for this so badly. haven't got a shooting board this is going to work nearly as well bit loose do I do another one ah yeah just super quick okay so now the trick will be to get everything equal so we're looking like that and then these will all go in their different levels like that simple as you like okay just going to stick those in. I think I'm just going to dribble a bit of CA glue down the corners there. What the fuck? <laughs> Ow! The CA glue has stuck to itself. Awesome. This could be the gods telling me, don't do use fucking CA glue, you idiot. And I'm still doing it. Well, there's that. So, as I was saying, what I'm going to do is use some CA glue that I'm going to splatter just in the corners, just in those little bits in there, um, and I'm going to put it in there with a uh, with a screw because you know the idea with this is just that the CA glue is just going to kind of weld into the corners. And it'll all be okay. Is it going to look very nice? No, probably not. Do I care though? Nope. I should also be able to uh, just kind of knock these bad boys out if I want to uh, to change it. I mean, I can't imagine I would. But if I wanted to. So this is 120. Probably put a mask on. Giving all the corners a bit of a rounding as well. Okay, yeah, that's all scratched up and dinged up and what have you. Alrighty, so silicon mat down there. Upturned screws, just making it as, as dangerous as humanly possible, and bosh, that's what we're going to use to finish. Now, I am going to use this Treetex uh, Color Tone Ultra. I don't know if this is the right stuff to use at this point in time, but I've not used it before, so let's give it a crack and see what's what. Made sure that it was well, well shaken. I'm going to pour some in here. What I'm hoping is this is going to darken things up enough to take us away from that kind of, you know, piney colour. And then I'll pop a bit of wax over the top of it and uh, hopefully it'll look kind of a bit old school. Oh, well, that's going to be troublesome. I've got skin showing. Looks like I'm going to have one brown finger. Oh, I'm going to have one brown finger. Okay, found a rag. Ideally, you want a white rag, but I haven't got white rag, so I'm using that rag. So let's see what happens. Right, so that's where we're at with that. Not the exact colour I wanted, but that's okay. We're going to get one of the Smurdex mesh pads. This one's going to be a 240.
Fold that over. I really like all this kind of stuff. It looks like it's just really been beaten up and thrashed about. So once again, this is the Libron Wax Polish Black Bison. This is the dark oak colour, not sponsored, not supported, bought it with my own money. A bit of an old scotch Bright pad. That way it should sort of really help work it into the grain as well. Okay, leave that for a bit and then buff it off. Okay, that's had a solid 20 minutes now. We've got another little black rag. Doesn't seem to have done a great deal on the color, but maybe, maybe it kind of darkened it just a tad. Maybe the 240 grit sandpaper was too much for it. It is feeling uh, very smooth though, so that's nice. So old looking aged box. Here we come, abrasive sticker, let's get that on the front. Barry, we need to get you some dark stickers mate. There we go, let's get it filled up. So, 80, 120, 180 and 240. So there we go, we've got the discs in that one and we've got the sheets in that one, I kind of like how that came out. Again, it's just meant to be a kind of an old worn box that could be however many years old. And that works for me. And so, as I said at the start, this isn't a real good looking box. It's just something that I've thrown together. It, it does the job it's needed. I wanted it to look old and battered. And uh, that's exactly what it looks like. It feels really smooth though, thanks to that Libron stuff. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's not going to sit on top of that. Um, I've got to figure out what I'm going to do with it next. But uh, but no, I'm really happy with how that turned out. If you want to try some of this Smurdex stuff as well, some of the sheets or the discs or the wet and dry or a whole bunch of other things, then go across to um, ebrasives.com and use WWJ5 for a 5% discount. But thank you, Barry Ebrasives, for uh, sending these on. And uh, yeah. I think we're all right. I'm going to have to put some finish on this thing now if I'm going to keep them together. I'll throw that on the floor. See you later. Bye-bye.